the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really thrilled today. We are bringing you another one of our Hall Star interviews. And we are today talking with actress Pascal Hutton. And this is so exciting. I'm film director Rachel Wagner. Caroline is here. Hey, y'all. Yep. And Pascal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, and so what we like to do is we like to start our interviews asking our guests to tell us what inspired you to become an actor. Well, you know, I grew up with a very theatrical mom. My mom was always uh, sewing, making costumes, writing plays for me and my sisters to be in. She would like wrangle all the neighborhood kids to put on plays and circuses. So the performance aspect always felt like it was naturally a part of my life. But I never, I was in a small town, like a very small town. And I never even occurred to me that this was a career that people had, because it certainly wasn't a career that I had any frame of reference for of examples right in front of me. So I got a high school teacher, a drama teacher said, you need to pursue this. Um, but at that time, I definitely thought it was going to be more on stage for sure. And that's what I went to university for and studied acting, primarily theater. And then I got out of university and a casting director saw me in something and tracked me down and said, I'd really like to represent you for film and television. Can I start submitting you for stuff? And I thought, hey, this is going to help me pay bills. Why not? Like, let's let's give it a go. And then I think my very first audition was a horror movie, but I booked it right away. And it was a steep learning curve because I'd never been on set before. And everyone on set assumes that you know what you're doing. And I did not know what I was doing, but uh, it was great. And I loved it. And then I started going out for more and more, more auditions. And I started booking more and more film and TV work and wasn't booking theater work. And I just sort of felt like, oh, well, this is where I'm naturally meant to go. And that is, then that's just kind of my career kind of took off in that direction. You started out doing plays like in high school and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. So did you do any ones that we would know? Um, let me try and think if I did. Um, I, we did a play of Arsenic and Old Lace. Oh, okay. But the main character, uh, it's the one played by Cary Grant in the movie. It's a male role. Uh -huh. And they changed it to make it a female role so that I oh, could play fun. that role oh, and yeah. I loved it I loved it so that was one and then we did a couple other ones that were more obscure the drama teacher that ended up coming in and encouraging me to pursue this as a as a career she was really into finding um smaller more obscure plays and and so that's that's what we ended up doing which was great because it made me really fall in love with the art of character, like building a character rather than just mm -hmm. performance. And for me, there feels like a difference. Yeah. So that must make it easy for you to connect with Rosemary <laughs> with her love of theater and her theatricality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like I have a little bit of that in me and certainly my <laughs> mom definitely had that in her, this mm -hmm. element of just performance and larger than life and just being able to fill up a room with her joie de vivre. And so for sure that, that felt kind of a very natural fit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe too natural. <laughs> Yeah, we were kind of just, we were hoping that in, uh, instead of the newspaper that they would finally open that theater in Hope Valley, the Rosemary, yeah. that was, that was going to be the reveal. We're like, oh, that'd be so great. I know, but you know, newspaper I feel will be like good that, too. that's always a part of who Rosemary is, but I think she's on a path right now of, um, just a different purpose, wanting to, she, wanting to do something that's, uh, connecting with the whole community in a personal way and in kind of more of a uh, investigative kind of way. And, but, you know, as with anything with Rosemary, uh, I think she, she pursues something and she throws her whole self into it. And then after a little while, she's ready to move on to something else. So who knows, maybe that theater mm -hmm. will come season yeah. 10, season 11, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> So how was the cold quarantine experience like for you? Was, was the, that challenging or did you enjoy it or how, how was that? When we were filming or before yeah, just this we, last year? Yeah. The whole year. Yeah. Um, I, it didn't, 
bother me yeah. so much. I, it didn't affect our filming in the sense that when the whole world locked down from like April until June, we were always supposed to be on our hi- hiatus at that time. So it didn't affect our filming schedule at all. And then when we came back, our set is very safe. We don't bring in a lot of uh, guest stars. Like we have kind of a locked cast and crew. We are, have either of you been to the town, Hope Valley? I want, no. I want to. Yeah, want to. you should, you should. It's mm-hmm. so special. It's so, it really is so magical but it's completely self-contained. It's on this huge acreage and there's nothing else around it. So it felt, we felt very um, kind of isolated in a very safe way for filming. And then as far as my, my own personal life, um, you know, my kids are at these ages where they still really love hanging out with me and my husband and they really love being at home with us. And Mm -hmm. they're not, I have friends who have kids who are in their teens and you know, late teens, early twenties. And I think that that's a more challenging parenting and child dynamic because in life, they're naturally at this point where they're supposed to be spreading their wings and branching away from their parents. And here they are locked down with their parents and it's unnatural. Whereas this felt very natural. The kids were like, great. What are we going to do today? Like, what's the plan? (laughs) So it's been really good. And in Canada, well, in BC, I will say, September, the kids were able to go back to school uh, in a totally normal capacity. Like they were just there uh, Monday to Friday, just normally. And uh, my kids' activities, they're into soccer and soccer was still up and running because it was outside. And and so a lot of kind of uh, cornerstones of our regular life and scheduling were still in place. And so life kind of felt a li- sort of normal. I think though, right now, everybody's like, I'm ready to yeah. may- maybe see some other people other than just <laughs> our house. <laughs> did you get on the uh, quarantine baking, the sourdough? Uh, I did. It's not really, I like baking, but the bread thing is not my thing. That, <laughs> And you know, our, our makeup artist, um, she got really into the sourdough and it seems like it's like a full-time job, like the starter and feeding the starter. Yeah. And the, the, I was like, this is too much. This is not this. I tried it once. My quarantine plan. <laughs> I tried it once and I'm like, once. I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah I'm like, not doing it. Although yeah, I, think I did you really have to like commit to it to get better. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. like the first 20 yeah. loaves are going to be garbage. And then until you get to the good ones. <laughs> I made banana bread. That was my specialty. So I did make bread. That's great. Yeah. 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 You you develop a relationship with your sourdough starter. It's, it's (laughs) intense. (laughs) Did you get into it? I didn't, but I had friends who did. And yeah, no, it was like, like it was like a really, it's a really intense relationship too. But (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So what's the difference between like filming movies and filming when calls a heart, like for actors? Well, I mean, when calls the heart has just been going on for so long. So there's such a family feel on set between the cast and the crew. We've been together for years now. And so things run very smoothly and, you know, everybody, it's very comfortable. We all know our characters so well and, Um, there's, there's a big open dialogue of, you know, what you think your character would do. And we all know our set so well, because we're just in that town. So things run very smoothly and easily on When Calls the Heart. The difference with the movies is it's a lot of of unknown. You're, you're put together. um, You know, when Kevin and I do movies together, that's great. We have each other, but often it's with a director you don't know, you've never worked with before, other actors you don't know. And so that adds an element of surprise and excitement, which is just fantastic for performance and for on-camera kind of spark and spontaneity. So that's great. And then also you get to just, there's an element of kind of adventure because you get to explore different locations. I mean, our, our most recent movie that we did, we were in Hawaii. I've never been to um, Oahu before and we were all over the island and that was so special to explore that whole island and see all these amazing locations and get to do exciting uh, adventurous activities in all these different locations so uh, 
that's, I'd say the biggest difference between the two. I'm jealous on that one. Huh. I know, yeah, no. <laughs> I know. Everyone was saying how, what, you have to do a movie in Hawaii during lockdown? Like, this isn't fair. And I said, well, I had to create this movie myself. <laughs> I said, you can do it too, but I had to do it. <laughs> Smart planning. <laughs> If only, if only we could podcast from Hawaii. I, mean, I guess we could. What's stopping I like, us? But I like that. Let's do it <laughs> on location. Yes. <laughs> so, one thing I wondered. So Rosemary started off as a rival for with Elizabeth, and mm-hmm. Brian Bird just recently said that in his everybody hated Rosemary, which is not me. But did you feel that? Did you feel like everybody? Uh, did you feel? The, it's something the I found out of Elizabeth. About, it's something actually I found out about after because I feel like it was a bit easier for me in the sense that that was season one and the Hardy's community and fan base was not as established and prolific as it is now. And so the show was still like a little fledgling show kind of finding its way and finding its finding its people finding its audience. And so, although I, I have heard a lot about that in subsequent years of, oh, I hated you, but then I've grown to love you. I yeah. didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that everybody hated me so much. <laughs> I didn't hate you either. I just didn't like you for, people for just Jack. Didn't like, yeah. People I think just didn't like me coming between Jack and Elizabeth, which obviously Mm -hmm. that was, that was totally understandable. And that was the purpose of why I was there was to create some, you know, some friction and some tension there. But I think um, the writers going forward and Hallmark and Brad Cravoy, they all wanted me to stay on board. They all wanted me to stay on the show and they wanted me to be, uh, they wanted Rosemary to be a beloved character of the audience. And so they were like, let's quickly bring in a different love interest. We don't want the fans to hate her. Let's find a distraction and move in that direction so that everybody will love Rosemary because we want this character to be a really lovable character because inherently without the Jack dynamic, she was, she was really feisty and and dramatic and exciting. And I think people liked that. They just didn't like what she was doing to Jack and Elizabeth. Yeah. I didn't like it either, guys. (laughs) I still laugh when when he drew the mustache on Elizabeth's picture. I still I still laugh at that. Snarky, I know. Rosemary, Rosemary. (laughs) Well, I thought you brought some much needed energy to the show. I that is, I I somebody who started watching late, so I was kind of binge watching to get caught up for the podcast, and uh, I I was very happy when uh, sort of Lee and Rosemary became a thing because I just. It was because the Elizabeth and Jack romance was so slow. <laughs> it, was, it was a slow burn, those two. <laughs> it's nice to have something a little more peppy. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family please consider and we will love you forever go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies that's patreon.com slash hallmarkies i loved it too i I love the dynamic between you and cabin and did y'all have a chemistry read before like you started or was it we did not that i have always said was just kind of the great kismet uh, occurrence that happened for us. We didn't have a chemistry. I didn't even know that they were introducing his character as, uh, as Rosemary's love interest. He did know that I found out after that he had been told we're bringing your character on. And if things click between 
Lee and the character of Rosemary, then we'll develop that as like a love interest, a love story. So he knew that. No one told me that. Um, but we just got on so well, like off camera, we just clicked really well. And there was just such an easy repartee between the two of us on camera. The dialogue they wrote us was really um, just peppy and uh, flirty. And it just, we just both, we played it very easily between the two of us. And we had a very easy relationship right out of the gate off camera. And then it just took off. I think everybody saw what was happening and just thought, oh, this is magic. Like we've got to write mm -hmm. more. We've got to write more and more and more for these two. That was me. I, I <laughs> loved it from the beginning. I was like, oh, I just love them so much. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so were you initially hired as a guest star and then they liked what you were doing and picked you up or were you in, did they have kind of a long-term plan from the beginning for Rosemary? You know, that's a, I, I actually don't know if there was always a long-term plan for Rosemary. I was brought on as a guest star for just those last two episodes of, of season one. And that's what I thought when I went in and auditioned, that's what it was presented at. I was actually on a contract with another TV show where I was committed to this other TV show. And then in the interim of when I finished filming, when calls the heart, my other show got canceled and then this show aired, like those episodes of When Calls the Heart aired. But when I read those episodes, it ended with me, Rosemary, as we all know, Rosemary walking off and saying, oh, well, we'll see you later to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth says, basically, like, have a nice life. And I say, oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here in Hope Valley. And I remember I phoned my agent and I said, um, it sort of seems like I'm staying on this show and he's like, okay, well, we'll see what's going to happen. Anyways, then my show was canceled. And then literally the next day, Brad Cravoy, who's the executive producer of One Calls the Heart, he phoned me and he said, we really want you to stay on as a series lead on the show. Um, what's your availability? And I said, well, your timing's fantastic because my show was canceled yeah. yesterday. And so then, <laughs> and then we just moved forward from there. And so I don't know if that was always their plan or if they saw how those episodes aired and really liked it. I, I, I actually don't know. I've never asked anybody. That'd be interesting to know. <laughs> One thing that as, as the plot, as, as a podcaster for What Comes the Heart, that we were all very uh, defensive, I guess, of how we felt like they treated you, particularly when you are planning Elizabeth and Jack's wedding in two weeks and the show treated you like you were some kind of villain about it. And I was like, she's planning a wedding in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you too tough on Rosemary, Could we do. I, well, that's very sweet. I know I, I, I always take all of it with a grain of salt. It's just because people really care, really love the show and love the characters. And um, so, no, I, I never take offense to it. I actually get, I actually think it's a really good sign. It means people care. People yeah. really care about the show. And so that's how I interpret it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I was like, don't give somebody two weeks to plan a wedding and then complain that she's <laughs> like, planning the wedding. <laughs> so aside from Aaron and Kavan, who is your favorite co-star to have lines with on the show? Oh, well, yeah, obviously those two. Um, it's always a delight when I get to be with Aaron and Kevin, but uh, I really like, I mean, and this isn't just because I get to do all the talking, but I really do love scenes with baby Jack just because, <laughs> <laughs> just because he, with kids, like, especially like a little, little, I mean, we've been doing scenes since he was a baby and now he's like three years old, but he, I mean, with a baby, they just can't give you anything but pure honesty, like a pure reaction. And I love that. I just think it, it is so spontaneous and so unpredictable. And I love that. I love that element. Um, I also, this season, and I didn't have a ton of scenes and actually one of them was, was cut actually, but I loved any scene with Viv who, um, who is a new character introduced this season. Uh, Viv and I have known each other for years and years and years um, as fellow actors. We've never been in a show together. And so I was, 
I was just so tickled to finally be sharing scenes with him after having known each other for, I want to say 15 years we've known each other. Oh, that was a fun dynamic. The Canfields were a pretty big win, I thought, this season. Huge win. I mean, they bring such a win, all of them, like all of them bring such a beautiful dynamic to the show and uh, so necessary. It's, it's great when a character or characters are introduced and it just feels like such an easy, smooth fit to the show right out of the gate. And that's how I felt with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our favorites, we loved the Canfields and then also Ned and Florence were oh, to win. Wasn't that so sweet? I just felt so like cute. they've been layering that in subtly in the background for seasons. This, these side eyes or like, if we ever had to do a scene in the saloon that would say um, like uh, Jesse and Clara's wedding or they would pick each other as dance partners and they just kind of quietly did it. And then to see it blossom into this full-blown story this season, I thought was so well-earned and just delightful to sit back and watch. Yeah. It was really good. I loved it. It was so cute. Yeah. Do you have a favorite storyline, like with Elizabeth and Rosemary, like any season? Any, I, I loved the storyline where, uh, in the Christmas episode where Elizabeth gives birth to baby Jack, mm -hmm. I thought, I loved that it was the three women, Abigail, Rosemary, and Elizabeth on their own. And I just felt like they, we saw this real strength and power of female friendship and female support and, and, and humor. They're lost and they're trying to put, they're trying to like birth this baby and what do we do? And I just thought it was, I, that to me was a perfect storyline for the three of them that I really liked a lot. I also really like epi episodes where um, Elizabeth and I uh, are doing things like um, hanging up the laundry in the back or doing an activity. Cause I think that that's so natural to um, women. Women are, I think my, in, at least in my life, rarely just sitting there talking often it's like okay let me put away the dishes while we're having a chat or let me do this well and so I just thought anytime the two women are doing something and having these heart to hearts feels very natural hmm. definitely well and that's the strength of the show is that the, the the female characters and the the bond of the sisterhood especially after Jack died having that that, mm -hmm. that group of women rally around Elizabeth Absolutely. That was nice. Uh, so we have the newspaper now that's been announced. That was really fun. And I'm really excited about the future stories that I think this is going to be able to tell because Rosemary will be kind of have, have a, an excuse for being a little nosy and, and yeah. <laughs> getting yeah, into perfect. people's business. <laughs> That'll be fun. Are you excited I think about it's that? Be Yes, I am. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. It's an idea that Kevin and I pitched because we also thought it would be really add an interesting dynamic to Rosemary and Lee's relationship as if she moves her office into his office. Um, and then they're, the two are kind of on top of each other in terms of both trying to run their businesses. And we saw a little bit of that in the season finale of Rosemary's put in another phone line and she's got deliveries and everything's coming and going. Kevin or Lee is like, what happened to my nice, mm -hmm. quiet uh, workspace? Uh, and yet he still totally supports her and he calls it her desk. And I just think that it, it was so indicative of who Lee is and how he supports Rosemary. She, she drives him crazy, but he loves her so much too at the same time. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what that'll do to their relationship and how, and you know, when a character or characters like a relationship has been so well established and we've seen them in so many different uh, situations over six, uh, eight, eight seasons now, uh, you always kind of have to reinvent, figure out what, how was, how are we going to change things up for these two, um, put them in new situation that's going to reveal new layers to them as individuals, but also them as a couple. And I feel like this is just fraught with exciting storyline possibilities. Yeah, I think it could almost have sort of a Bridgerton feel. I don't know if you saw any of that show, but it would oh, start out with- Oh, I saw all of it. I yeah, saw okay. all of it, of course. <laughs> it was so good. But it, it could have kind of like 
Rosemary writing an editorial about something, you know, going on in yes. her valley and speaking her yes. mind and then everybody's talking about it and there'd be kind of this. Yes, uh, exactly. It, exactly. It could be really That's fun. what I was thinking. And then maybe, and then, I mean, there could be storylines of where maybe Lee feels like she's divulged some private information that he didn't want put in, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Want mm -hmm. put, you know, like those mm -hmm. kind of lines being uh, blurred and what is private, what's public and different mm -hmm. definitions of that. Yeah. Okay. Last questions about this. Okay. Did you have a team? Like I have been very vocal about what team I've been on right from mm -hmm. the beginning. And that's team Elizabeth. I think me and Rosemary, we've been united mm -hmm. on this we've always been team elizabeth and we always wanted what was best for elizabeth and we mostly wanted elizabeth to a figure that out for herself and b just wanted elizabeth to find love again wanted her to feel confident to open her heart and and experience that again that joy and so the fact that elizabeth has chosen lucas um I, for me is neither here nor there. I'm just so happy that she it has chosen to be in chosen to open her heart and, and venture down that path again. And I think that that's a real sign of, of hope. And that's what ultimately this show is about. I know people are very, um, and we, you know, it was to be expected, right? You create two teams. Well then whichever team didn't get picked in the end of course they were going to be devastated but this goes back to what I was saying originally is no matter how heated things get right now to me I always take that as a sign that that's because people the fans care so deeply they care about the show they care about the characters and that's a good thing that's that's mm -hmm. why we do why we do this we do this so that people care deeply about these stories and these people did yeah, you guys I'll, have a team yeah. did you guys have a team I was, I was team. I was team Lucas, and I was team Nathan. <laughs> oh, this is this is just really good drama for a podcast. <laughs> it's just right. head but, to head. But I'm happy for Elizabeth. So I was team Elizabeth, but I was yeah. more leaning towards Nathan. But I don't oppose Lucas, so I'll be. I'm happy. So <laughs> I, just, I just felt like team Lucas would make for more interesting TV, which is I'm always on the side of good TV because well, I, I mean, just felt like there was more stories to tell. People, a lot of the things I, I'm seeing and hearing people are like, it's always been about a teacher and a Mountie. And I don't disagree. It, yes, it was about a teacher and a Mountie, but the story has evolved. The characters have evolved. Um, and it doesn't, it, that relationship was beautiful. It was, yeah. it's like Rosemary says, it was a season and it was glorious, but Jack did die and now Elizabeth needs to move on. And I don't think necessarily just replacing him with another Mountie is the decision. It was really about who is the better man for Elizabeth. And, you know, I, there was an interview that Kevin McGarry did. Um, and I thought he said it really, really well. He said, and this was back in when the two men were first introduced. So what season is that season six, maybe six, six, six. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think one of the men uh, has a lot to give Elizabeth and one of the men really needs a lot from Elizabeth and he was mm -hmm. meaning himself like mm -hmm. Nathan needs a lot from Elizabeth but Lucas has a lot to give and to me I felt like well there it is in a nutshell like the person who can give Elizabeth I mean that's really at the heart of love I think is is that generosity of heart, generosity of spirit and what you're giving to the other person, not what you're taking. And mm -hmm. so in that sense, I felt like, oh, Lucas is a perfect, is the, the perfect person for Elizabeth. But that said, I would have been happy if she picked Nathan too, just as long as she was happy and she was yeah. excited about her future. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what Absolutely. they do going forward. It really will be, we're excited. Well, and, and if, oh, and if, ahead. and if, and if Rosemary and Elizabeth became friends, I have no doubt Nathan and Lucas can become friends. So exactly, yeah. exactly, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this was a very unlikely friendship that has blossomed into the most beautiful friendship on the show uh, between Rosemary and Elizabeth. So you're right. If that's possible, mm -hmm. anything's mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. 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 And hey, we saw those little, maybe a little uh, thing about uh, faith is now available. I know. Oh, oh, there. La we'll la. See. Like, what's going on there? <laughs> Yeah, very good. Apply right, that well, bandage. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, now they got the Band-Aid patent in town. <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, all right, well, let's talk about you have me at Aloha. Mm-hmm. When you, we're really excited about this movie. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So this movie started years ago. Uh, Kevin and I were sitting there going, what would we like to do? together we wanted to develop something and I said I want to play a character that's really totally different than Rosemary and he said great I'll play the opposite of that and I said and we also we had a friend who had shot a movie for Hallmark in Fiji Martin Wood he was he's a director and we thought well that's not fair why is Martin getting to go to Fiji and we're not getting to go to Fiji so our basis was we wanted I, we wanted opposing characters like opposites and we wanted it to take place in Fiji. That was originally what we thought. And then Hallmark right away said, Fiji's not happening. It's so difficult to film there just with the time change. Like it's just a difficult time change situation. So we said, okay, um, we're going to just create a show that has to be in a tropical location. You pick the tropical location, Hallmark. We'll, just, we'll come up with the story. And so we came up with this story of my character is this, uh, travel producer tra- uh, produces a travel show and does all this research about travel and how to have the best holiday, how to have the best vacation, what are the best activities, best places to eat, best everything. But she doesn't actually travel anywhere. She's a bit of a recluse. She likes to just stay quietly in her apartment and do all this research from the comfort of her own home. And then Kevin's character is uh, kind of a spontaneous, wild, fly by the seat of his pants, YouTube travel star. And my show needs a new host and he's kind of the last ditch resort. And, but they don't want him doing it on his own. So they pair me up and say, you have to do it with him to kind of almost babysit him. So it's this oil and water situation of trying to now host a show together and they have completely opposing ideas about what travel is my character is all about let's research let's plan everything out and his character is like like not let's not plan anything let's just talk take a car and drive into the jungle and see what happens and so it's kind of like how do these two resolve their different styles and ultimately how do they learn to value and find the value in each other's approaches that sounds really fun. I it is. It's really fun. That's it. exactly the word. I've seen the movie. Uh, and I will say it's just a really fun, adventurous romp through Hawaii with the two of us. It's you'll have a smile on your face the whole way. And you had said on your Instagram, what a great experience it was for you the whole time shooting in Oahu and you were thinking the people there and everybody. Uh, and uh, so I, I can understand because I've been to Oahu and it's unbelievable. Uh, that must have been just an incredible experience. It was. It was one of the most uh, rewarding, special, fulfilling experiences of my entire career. I loved the people that I met there so much. The crew that we worked with were phenomenal and so generous and uh talented and uh but just the experience the whole vibe on Hawaii and the island is so beautiful and so spiritual it felt like everywhere we went just had this really special um spiritual energy to it and I I just I just soaked it all up I loved every second of filming and we had this amazing team of um Jen Aspen came on uh Jennifer Aspen she was our producer but she also plays my best friend on the show and so she was so much fun to work with and John Putch is our director and he's directed a few things for Hallmark as well and he just has he just has comedy like running through his blood and so he was really fun to um come up with ideas and bounce ideas around with and so the whole thing was just felt like making our making my dream project with my dream team that's what it felt like oh. did you get to have shaved y- ice while you were there oh. you know what so I didn't I've had <laughs> shaved ice in Hawaii but I was on the mission and ever, to have shaved ice because I loved it I love it so much and we everybody kept saying oh you've got to go to this one place you've got to go to this one place on the north shore yep. don't get it anywhere else go to the north shore and so we were on the north shore and Kevin and I had lunch together and I got so full 
that I could not eat the shaved ice. I was like, I'm so stuffed right now. I can't have another bite. Anyway, so shaved ice missed me by. I I guess I'll just have to go back. (laughs) It's a bigger sequel. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Did y'all get to do any adventure like while you were there? Like going on? Oh, we did so much. It was so, I mean, a lot of it's written into the movie. And so we, we, there's this place called Kuloa Ranch and it's where they film Jurassic Park and tons of uh, Jumanji, like all these movies have filmed there. And so we got to explore all through there and there's lots of really fun activities. I don't want to say too much because I want people to see it and see it unfold of all the things we got to do, but we got to actually, we were filming a movie, but all the fun adventurous things that you would want to do on holiday in Oahu, we were actually getting to do as part of the movie, which was amazing. Was it hard to do that kind of shoot with, with COVID restrictions? Is that challenging? Uh, you know, surprisingly, I mean, all of that went very, very smoothly. And I don't know if that's just because, I mean, they, they had so many protocols in place. And by this point, film crews were kind of used to the new COVID restrictions. I mean, people, I think film industry kind of opened up, well, in Vancouver, it opened up in July. And then last July. And then in Hawaii, I think it opened up in September. And so those sorts of things were kind of second nature. And so in terms of that, that was running quite smoothly. Um, But also it was quite quiet while we were there. Uh, People weren't traveling avidly yet. And so I don't know, Oahu was not super bustling, hopping with tons and tons of tourists. And so uh, it felt it felt safe and it felt kind of quiet to film this movie, which was perfect. That's great. Well, we're excited for the film. We think it's going to be nice escapism, which I think is what we all need right now. Right. I forgot how much I love to travel yeah. and, and it's close. It's close. It's right on the horizon of getting to adventure and go outside mm-hmm. of our little bubbles. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, we like to end our interviews with some fun little silly questions. I uh, love it. Fantastic. Okay. Let okay. it roll. <laughs> okay, first question. What is the best ice cream flavor? Um, I'm going to say chocolate chip mint or rum raisin, but you know, I'm allergic to dairy. And so mm. the, the best brand is um, there's two brands of dairy-free ice cream. <laughs> this is probably more of an answer than you wanted. But <laughs> one is Ernest uh, ice cream here in Vancouver. And then the other one is uh, Uma Luma, which they mm-hmm. have a Mahalo, uh, Mahalo macadamia chocolate ice cream, which is kind of Hawaiian. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's vegan and it's delicious. So th- that's usually what I would go for. The Ernest uh, rum raisin or the Uma Luma Mahalo macadamia and chocolate mm-hmm. one. Yum. Uh, so what is your favorite color? Blue. What music are you into right now? Um, I really like uh, R&B or folk music. That's what I would be listening to on a regular basis. Great. Uh, so we used to ask, what's your go-to date night food? But since nobody's really dating these days, uh, what's your like? What's your Postmates or your your DoorDash order that you would get? Um, I really love Mexican food, and so I actually don't. I we would normally cook it ourselves, and I but I love love love. That's my go to. That would, if I'm gonna have a nice, fun night, always Mexican for sure. Okay, dogs or cats? I love them both. I always grew up with a whole house full of dogs and cats, so I love them both. I can't pick. Okay. Beaches or mountains? Ah, in my heart, I'm a mountain girl. In my heart, I'm a mountain girl, but I love going to the beach because that's more of a novelty for me. I grew up in the mountains, so that's like who I am, but I love a vacation to the beach. Very good. All right. What is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Thanksgiving. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. Last question. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? And you can say one of your own. <laughs> uh, no, it's not my own. Love Actually would be my number one, okay. probably. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. I yeah. know. Who doesn't love it? It's like a tradition. <laughs> very good. All right. Well, very good. You passed the test. You answered all the questions. <laughs> Does anybody take a pass? Nobody takes a pass on those questions. No. 
everybody, everybody, everybody passes. Everybody <laughs> does a great job. <laughs> well, very good. Thank you so much for coming on, talking with us. This was a blast. It was so much fun. And we are, we're really excited about the new movie. We're really excited about the new season of When Pulse the Heart coming up. So thanks again. And do you have social media you want to share? Anything like that? Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram and and uh, and Twitter. And you know, you just type in my name. I get the handles confused. I don't have good handles. So if you just type my name in, you'll find me. I'm the one with the blue check mark. <laughs> okay, great. We'll have our all in the description too. If people want to follow you, they can. So thanks again. We appreciate really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, thanks thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. Let's thank Pascal for coming on the podcast. This was a great time. And Caroline, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Mita Caroline Art. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Ron Tomatoes. So please check that out. And you can follow the podcast on Homework Pod and Homework Keys Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. It really helps us a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that so much. We're almost at 3K subscribers. So that's very exciting. Uh, we also have our patron group where we have incredible experiences. Like we just had our watch along with Michael Damien and Lacey Chabert. I mean, for $2 a month, incredible. And so definitely sign up for that. We also have our merch store, which has tons of Hardee's inspired merch, including Team Coulter shirts that we talked about in the episode. So check that out. And thanks so much again to Pascal. And we'd love to hear your thoughts about the interview uh, in the comment section or on Twitter. So we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Bye.